Uh, I was actually really happy with our uh, qualifying effort. As early as we went, that's just the first 10 cars they were at a you know, big disadvantage. You know, anytime you have these high tire wear racetracks, uh, they're always gonna be better once you get them cleaned up. And so we knew our really bad metric score from last week was, was gonna bite us in qualifying, but overall I was very happy with the car. And how tough do you find Darlington? You've pretty seasoned at racetracks. How tough is this one? Uh, it's as tough as it gets, certainly. I feel like it's the, the most physical, most uh, mentally grueling the track that we have on our circuit. What do you think about the 25 schedule? Um, going back to Mexico, a place where you won, what was the atmosphere like then, and how much are you looking forward to going back? Yeah, the atmosphere was great when we went there. You know, it's been such a long time ago. My memories, <laughs> like, it's, it's hard, <laughs> even though I, I went there twice. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I remember it, it being tons of fans and certainly uh, a lot of that played into you know, kind of the local heroes that were racing in the event in the, in the Xfinity Series uh, at that time. So uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll do it right and um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Seeing it as a driver and owner, just to take the sport internationally, um, how big of a step is that from both sides of it for you? I, I, I think it's, you know, great for NASCAR and, and hopefully, uh, you know, can help grow the sport. Do you see more responses or anything that want to be involved in the um, I, I'm not really sure. I haven't, not that I've heard of uh, lately, uh, but again, the schedule just came out. So, I mean, obviously we all kind of knew uh, what was going on, but, uh, but no, we haven't, um, we haven't had those talks. Were you able to watch Bubba's lap and yes. what have you done to encourage him this week? Um, I think just, you know, knowing you got to get after it. You know, there, there is no, um, you know, waiting on something to happen. You, you're going to have to make it happen. And I think, uh, yeah, they're, they're doing a good job thus, thus far. Okay. I know. Go ahead. What, what's your thoughts on Atlanta starting the playoff, basically a speedway race? Well, it's tough. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, when I look at the Atlanta and, and certainly the uh, road course race that we got in there, um, and Bristol, I mean, you just never know what can happen, certainly. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it could definitely lend itself to a, a top two or three contender going out in the first round. We usually see we usually see you run the Xfinity race here. Every, is there a reason for not running it this year? <sighs> yeah, I, I just... Um, I had been trying to retire from the Xfinity Series for quite some time now, um, but I just felt like um, I needed to save myself for 500 miles here. I just think that this is such a tough racetrack and uh, an event. Um, I need to save all the stamina I've got for, for the one event and focus really on trying to uh, you know, make sure I give my best effort in the Cup Series. And I, it hasn't really changed any efforts or results that we've had in the Cup Series by running the double, but I just felt like I needed a little more time to focus on the cup. Thank you. What are your Darling? thoughts on the end season tournament that they're going to hold next year? Uh, yeah, certainly a good thing. Um, you know, I think that it's something that certainly incentivizes the teams uh, and drivers and, you know, should, should create some great storylines going into uh, into the summer next year. So, does a million Michael, dollars mean anything in that deal at all? I mean, too much. it means something to the team, it means something to the drivers, absolutely. Um, it's it's like winning an all star race. I mean, uh, certainly, uh, the, the, the dollar fitter figure itself is it's changed over time, right? You know, but I think it's still you know, a prestigious thing that uh, you want to have kind of on your accolades of, of accomplishments. With this now being the cut race or the final race of the regular season, Denny, does that take away anything from it also being the Southern Pilot? Yeah, I don't. I hope not. Um, I mean, this is such a tough, tough race and racetrack. You know, you, it would always, you know, this was always kind of the. I don't know if it was the third in line of the majors or people saw it that way, but I just think that this is way tougher race, racetrack than what like Charlotte is. 600 miles there is a breeze compared to 500 here at this racetrack. So, um, yeah, I. I hope not because this is a this is one of the big ones and certainly one that we focus on. Does it make it fitting then almost that the toughest track on the schedule is going to set the playoff field? Yeah, certainly. It's going to test everyone and, and certainly, you know, why you think, well, you know, everything looks pretty black and white on paper that this person has got this amount of lead or this person's this far behind. It's going to be too much of a gap. We've seen attrition go crazy in this type of race. We've seen, um, you know, the... 19 cars finish on the lead lap it's, it's hard it's really really hard so 
Um, we've had our share of it. We dominated this race last year and had a loose wheel there in the third stage, and that was all she rode. So those things can happen to anyone. Denny, another pressure pack situation for Bubba this weekend. It certainly came through it last year with making the playoffs, but uh, you know he's talked openly about you know dealing with the pressure and handling that. How have you worked with him or talked with him about helping through situations like this the last few years to where you know tomorrow night is not a, a situation that truly defeats him or something that's been weighing on him since mm -hmm. last week and the disappointment. You know, it's tough because I, I think uh, if you got pressure in race 26, then, you know, I think that we've had 25 other opportunities where the pressure should have been the same. So I just, what I've been preaching is that every race counts. Every You have to bring it every single week. You cannot take one week off in this thing, especially if you aren't winning, you have to be a top 10 guy every single week. And so that's really, really hard to sustain. Um, I still think Bubba is still on the rise. He's still getting better. Um, and he's taken strides over where he was just two years ago. So um, I'm really happy with the result either way, but I know he's gonna give us 100% effort. What do you see What do you see that's uh, showing you the strides? Because look, maybe he, he advances and makes it to the playoffs again tomorrow night, but there's a chance he might not. People would say, that it's it, there, there is an advancement so how are you seeing him advance the last couple of years yeah i mean i think i, I see it in speed um i see it in the stack column i, I see the, but that's the, your whole organization i mean your, your whole organization's got the whole thing is better yeah. yes absolutely um again you know we were kind of in a split situation last year where bubba made the playoffs but the 23 didn't and you know this year he has an opportunity to get both of them in right and so um realistically he's probably in the same situation he was last year had chase not missed the races that he he did so i think um even though you know you, you can still measure it by points earned you know where were you last year versus, versus this year yeah i mean do we, we do we count on Harrison Burton and those guys winning? No, absolutely not. But we know at the beginning of the year, you can't just be top 16 in points. You have to be 12th or better to feel somewhat okay about your position. Um, certainly, I feel like if he's had the performance that he has over the last 10 weeks, you know, he would have been in Martin Truex spot or better. But it just took a little while for that 23 team to get going this year. And, and now they're under the under the gun here in the in the last hour. So Michael Jordan wrote a note to on a text to Bubba Wallace, and the much was made of it, right? Encouraging him after Daytona. Does he give you similar encouragement when you have a bad race, or does do his words help you? Apparently, Bubba paid attention because he was quoting him. Of course. I mean, I think that um, you know, knowing that you know he's got your back and. Um, you know, Michael's been very supportive of uh, Bubba and his whole career. It's you know we gave him an opportunity you know four years ago, and you know he is with an organization that is on the rise very very quickly, and he knows that. And so when you heard comments like he said last week about you know he's got one battling for the championship and one on the bubble, uh -huh. and that's not acceptable. He's taken responsibility for that, and that's something that I think that you know a few years ago he would have been placing blame elsewhere. So I think that he knows where he needs to improve, but I'm. I'm very, very pleased with where he's at right now and where he's going to go. Can you the, have them a playoff without Kyle Bush? Yeah, you might want to start planning for it. <laughs> well, I mean, clearly, but I mean, since they reintroduced this, or since they introduced mm -hmm. the format in 2014, he's been a mainstay. I know, um, but I, I think, um, yeah, I, I think this debate, Harvick had it, many had it through this week, right? About, you know, should win in your end really be win in your end? Um, if you're a purist, you'd say no. If you just want excitement, and, and not, you know, I think that uh, I think there's a balance to be had there for sure. Um, should you know, certain performance standards be in play? Yeah, because you know, I, I just don't know that necessarily one win, especially super speedway or whatever circumstances, it could be fuel mileage one week, it could be certain super speedway. Like, should that movie up 20 spots and points? I'm just not sure. Um, maybe, you know, just thinking out loud, do, do you, does everyone go in the playoffs? You're locked in. Once you're eliminated, you go back to your normal points position, you know, something like that to where at least your whole season is put into the final result, not just one race that changed your entire trajectory. You're going to leave the series, Denny, with playoff appearances now at 18. 
number strike you at all? You're leading the way there. I don't, I don't think you've ever missed it. Uh, I what, did. Six? I did. The one year I didn't run full time. Yeah. I had that injury. Full time. You've never. Yeah. I mean, it's luckily I haven't kind of been in these bubble situations that much because we have been able to win which is very fortunate and I don't take that for granted but um, you know I think that uh, I'll retire and somebody will take that <laughs> I, I will someone will, that will not be a very long-standing uh, accolade I don't think and when will that be no. As soon as he retires I'll retire okay. that? <laughs> <laughs> that? as someone who's won a lot the last 10 years would you like to see a point system that rewards winning more than just what it does now? Oh, God, no. Because there were years of when the winner well, didn't get more I points than the second place. Think, think about it like this. Harrison Burton's win meant more in the regular season had he won in the playoffs. Like, it meant more for him to win just a regular season race than if he would have won in the playoffs, during the playoffs. Okay. So... I, I think it's kind of backwards, uh, if anything. So I think that winning, if anything, is is counting for too much because there's so many variables in our sport. We don't necessarily always control our outcome. Um, so I think you have to account with a bigger sample size to get your, your true um, data point. Okay. It just seems odd, that, for example, Kyle Larson the other day, two years ago, won 10 races. Mm -hmm. They came down to the last pit stop at Phoenix well, that's, to be the champion. Well, because the sample size got smaller, right? He we did all that in the regular season, and then we, we run a three-race season. We're about to start a three-race season, which oh, okay. is why it terrifies me that we got to go to Atlanta and some of these other tracks, and I've got you know half the points that I had in the playoffs. If you had a three-race showdown, where would it be? Road course, big track, Phoenix, maybe? I'm not really sure. I, you know, I think kind of leave the scheduling to them, but they're going to make whatever sense yeah. next to the market, um, things like that. Certainly, there's some racetracks that, if you look at it, there's there's you, it's a little bit more predictable as far as the you know what cars are going to contend, right? And so it's just a balance of what I think Kevin Harvick said it perfectly. What do we want in our sport? Do you want excitement or do you want you know real results? And and, and there's there's just a balance there. Thank you. With Mexico City, last question. With Mexico City on the schedule, Richmond's now down to one date. Is your home race was that? Disappointing to hear. Was it it's kind of ex was it kind of coming? Were you expecting it? Just what are kind of emotions? Bummer. It's an absolute bummer for sure. But you know, th these if, if you don't show up, these things happen. And you know, I've been uh, my family's been a season ticket holder at, at Richmond for nearly 40 years now. And so, you know, we we used to barely could find a seat in turn two to that just got squished and reduced and reduced. And so. Um, the world's different now. Um, I think uh, you know there's just so much competition and content that uh, you know you're 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 chasing eyeballs that you know are glued to their phones and whatnot now. So it's hard to get them to a racetrack. All right, thank you, Dad. Thank you, guys. Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos. And if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.